Back again out here at Swore Ranch Park uh, with uh, Mr. Rovey. And uh, this, this man's quite a legend, not in his own mind, but truly uh, for the city of Glendale and his family, a big, big, big part uh, of, of really the show that's happening today at Swore Ranch Park. And I can't ever remember the name because it's a long name, Arizona Early Day Engine, Gas yes. Engine and Tractor Association. Correct, yeah. Arizona Early Day Gas Engine Tractor Association. T I've told them we needed to shorten that. It gets to be a little bit of a tongue Tongue old twister. tractors, <laughs> old tractors, old tractors. Well, but, but we've got to be careful that we don't offend the you know the other half is the engines. There you go. And they, they always get uh, you know perturbed that we're doing all the tractor old pulling. Old tractors and, and tractorless engines. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. If you that if you would work. for for the the people that are viewing this, uh, Larry, tell us about really the mission of of that organization. What what you're trying to do? What you're trying to accomplish? What you hope to accomplish? Well, the uh, you know is a group of uh, people that that mostly typically they had some agricultural background that uh, you know they 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 had time or, or had some uh, experience with tractors on an uncle's farm maybe on their dad's farm or whatnot and so you know they they wanted to preserve some of that history some of those items and you know there's a whole variety of reasons why somebody might get and restore or sa save a tractor you know the thing that appeals to me and some is that how simple they are compared to modern technology but Generally, they got together, and the mission is is to preserve some of the history of agriculture, and then get together, uh, share it with each other, brag about it to each other, uh, and so you know, it started out as a backyard. I mean, these guys get together and, and meet in somebody's backyard in their their back pasture. It went on like that for a few years, and uh, but it started growing. I mean, the interest came in, and and. Uh, they, uh, the, the, the organization lost their opportunity to have this event in February of, uh, for the February of 89 show wasn't gonna happen. We didn't, didn't have a place to have it. And I said, hey, bring it out to the farm. And so I hosted it in 89. And when I did that, it was huge. And there's a lot of people came out and I said, you know, this is really too big for somebody's backyard anymore. We need, we need to, and I knew that the Swore Ranch was over here and really underutilized. And, but the uh, Swore Ranch at, at that the, time wasn't what it is today. No, no, not at all. It, uh, Glendale had bought it a few years earlier and uh, the Historical Society was set up in the guest house, but by and large, the rest of it was kind of just dormant. This whole area out here in the barnyard was fenced off over there near the pump house and this was city storage. I mean, there was playground equipment, asphalt piles. There was, I mean, it was a, it was a junkyard out here, but inter intertwined were the buildings and some antique equipment. When we got the tractor show moved over here in, uh, in 91, I, I, I held the show at the, at the farm out there at the dairy in 89. And then in 90, I invited all of the council to come out to the farm so they could see what we were doing. I believe a fair amount of them made it out there, and so they understood what we were doing. And then the next year, I worked with the city, trying to drag the tractor club. A lot of them were a little reluctant to come to town with their tractors. They thought, oh, that's, you know, we don't take tractors to town. But eventually, we came together. We came to the ranch in 91. 25 years has just zoomed by, but it has just exploded in, in size. It's, it's, and it's neat. Well, I know from past years because I've been uh, I've been part of the uh, of the association uh, back when I had my trailer business, and, right. and we have a couple antique tractors ourselves. And in fact, uh, one year I, I actually flew over uh, and took aerial photos for oh, you guys. Right, uh, right, right. So you know, I, I've been uh, not not an active member, I, you know, and, I, and I'm ashamed to say that, but uh, but I've been an interested member for an awful long time. Sure. We you know we have a couple tractors. One of the tractors. Uh, that we have is my wife's grandfather that he bought uh, brand new okay. and uh, and so uh, we went back to Texas about five ten years ago bought that tractor I had to cut the trees out that had grown up right. through it yeah <laughs> uh, loaded onto a trailer bring it out here and yeah. restored it and, and uh, so uh, I, I understand that that passion for this really simplistic early mechanical right. and, and you stop and think going from covered wagons to uh, basically steam engine to this early engine and, and then all of a sudden we're flying, uh, yeah. you know, jet planes at Mach 2 and, and uh, pulling eight Gs. And right. what, what a, in a century's time, what an incredible difference. And yet, a hundred years ago, you could still come out here and still see these engines running that are a hundred years old. It's amazing. Right. Yeah. Hi. Hi. What do you think is the, the most unique 
thing out here at the show. I don't know if you've had a chance today to look around, but but each year there's always something that really kind of stands out. Have uh, probably the oldest tractor here is a, a Samson sieve grip that was built in the mid teens. And uh, it was built, actually, the, that company was bought by General Motors, built the, the Samson tractor. They tried to compete against Henry Ford for a few years, simply couldn't do it. Henry was cranking out those little Fordsons fast and cheap, and, and General Motors, uh, um, I think they lost something like $77 million in their tractor venture, and they shut it down started building Pontiacs in that plant and, and got out of the tractor business. So anyway, the Samson sieve grip sits over there. Over in the engine area, there's a couple of engines over there that are just absolutely amazing. And unfortunately, one of the ones that I like the best is one that came from Europe. It's a, I think it's called an Allen engine. Beautiful, it's brown and the, what intrigues me is the uh, diesel injection system on it is just you know, some engineer had to have nightmares to design that thing. Well, and they didn't amazing. do it on computers either. No, no, you know, that's the amazing thing, yeah. you know. The, the CAD systems weren't uh, weren't up and running true, back true, then. Truly brilliant, yeah. brilliant people. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was out here uh, a few years ago, and I, if I remember, it was a Stanley Steamer that was out here. It was an actual steam car that was running. Right. And that that was the thing that just, boy, it was a magnet. I mean, it was a right. moth to the flame. Yeah. It drew me right to it. Yeah. I, you know, I, I, I love that type of stuff. But there's literally... There's literally anything anybody yeah. wants to see. If you like old antique equipment, right. it's out here. Yeah. It's out here. Yeah. Your favorite? My favorite? Brand. Here? Oh, the favorite brand. I, can, I guess I can't say a favorite brand. I guess I would tend to, like most, say, well, John Deere's are neat. Some of that's the uh, the sound of the, two, the John Deere two-cylinder. Jo Johnny, yeah. uh, the Johnny Johnny Poppers, Poppers the, right. the, the thump, thump, thump. You know, it's an indescribable sound. Yeah, you know, you know I, I, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you a quick story on that. I, I bought a, a, a Model A, right. John Deere Model A from a guy uh, up in Camp Verde and trailered it down here and uh, got, in, got in late that night. It was dark and so I just left it sit on the trailer and the next morning I was pretty pumped up about it. Right. And I went out and I fired that thing up and, and, and it literally goes, choo, 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 choo. Right. And my next door neighbor, uh, at the time, he was in his in his uh, uh, mid 80s. Right. He come running out of his house with the biggest smile you've ever seen in right. your face, and he said, "I knew that was a John Deere." <laughs> uh, and and well, I, that was something that I, I I didn't really expect, but right. he recognized it sound laying in bed. Now, now uh, a few years ago, and I, I haven't seen one here today, but a few years ago, you actually had a steam, and, and I it was a tractor, but it looked like a locomotive on wheels. Well, we have the uh, steam engine, and it is here. Unfortunately, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't pass uh, the steam boiler test now, so we can't run it. We used to have the steam engine. There's a case, a 65-horse steam engine. The club owns that one. The one that's similar to that, and people mistake it for a steam engine all the time, is the uh, Rumley. It's a 2040 Rumley oil pull that I have. Looks kind of like a steam engine. It's got a great big box on the front, and the, the exhaust comes out the front kind of like a steam engine. But it's a two-cylinder gasoline or, or kerosene engine, and uh, the engine lays down much like the early John Deere Ds. But it's big, big red wheels, and that might be what you're referring well, to. Well, the one that's that I, my favorite yeah, tractor. The one that I remember actually had had this the, the steam oh, whistle on. Then that's the case. And, uh, and, right. and you stood on the back and, and right. if you didn't know if you didn't know you would have thought it was a locomotive. Precisely. Well there wasn't uh, a whole lot of difference. Right. right. It was uh, just no, the, no rubber tires, yeah, everything was, yeah, was yeah, steel. It was steel wheels and, and the, the only difference between the locomotive was is that they put train wheels on rails as opposed on, yeah. to the steel wheels to drive it in the dirt. So yeah, yeah it's same same thing, yeah. same engine. What, so. what what would you uh, what would you tell the viewers uh, uh, about this event that's going on out here? What what would you like to what would you like to convey to, well, to the citizens of Glendale? You know, I guess what we, we always hope to do is, is entice or in, in, in get younger generation interested in coming out, uh, you know, and seeing this and hopefully we can, in, you know, uh, get younger generation enthused to come and join us. And then it's like uh, Councilman uh, Hughes said a little while ago, he says, gosh, you can go buy one of these for $2,000. You can't buy a, a lawnmower tractor for $2,000. And that's true. You can go buy a nice project tractor and they're fun, they're simple, they're, uh, and it's a lot of fun to bring them out. And, and uh, you know, you don't have to be a farmer. A lot of our members are not farmers. And so uh, 
uh, the uh, uh, you know my my goal is is to keep this alive and and keep you know keep an opportunity for the newer generations to come and see what agriculture is because every one of us every one of us gets up and eats we all like to eat every day and we put yeah, on you clothes. mean that food doesn't come yeah. from the grocery store <laughs> you're right <laughs> you know and so we need to remember it's the agriculturalists it's the farmers that keep us all going every day and uh, and there's going to be a big disconnect between people who understand what the farmer and the farm is you know where have all the farms gone? Well, they're out around there somewhere, but you know we're sitting on what used to be farm ground. Right. And to that, Glendale has got a jewel, has got a jewel sitting right here in town. And the fact that this is still here, and and you know in a in a historic uh, uh, designation, you know this thing needs to keep going. We need to keep polishing on it, and, and it'll it'll be good. Well, on well a couple future. thoughts that I had. One is is for the viewers. Uh, there's very few tractors out here that you either can't get uh, new parts for, mm -hmm. or there's somebody that can't make the parts. And, right. and the one thing, the, the camaraderie between everybody that owns tractor is everybody helps everybody. If Absolutely. you run into something that you don't understand or don't know, there's there's probably 10 guys willing to come over Absolutely. and show you how yeah. smart they are. Well, But that makes it fun. That's right, that makes it fun. And the camaraderie, I, uh, I, I have an immense collection and people ask, well, you know, why, why Larry? And, and, and I guess I'd like to say why. And that's because in the 80s, when I first heard about the Antique Tractor Club and I went to one of their events, eh, that's kind of neat. But when I got involved, then I found out the snowbirds were coming out to Arizona and gathering up all of Arizona's artifacts, all of our old tractors, because the tractors in Arizona, a lot of what we have were unique to Arizona, California for vegetables. They didn't have them in Iowa, Kansas back there. So our tractors with a single front tire was a very unique tractor. And so the snowbirds were coming out here and they were gathering up all of our history and hauling it back to the Midwest. And that offended me. And so I started gathering with a vengeance. I started, when I'd find an old tractor, I'd gather. So I've got way more than I need. Well, well now, as far as, as, far as the, the Tractor Association, Early Engine Association, uh, you guys have this event once a year. We have it once a year here at Swore Ranch, and then one month from now, on the same dates in March, we have basically the same event over in Apache Junction at the Apache Junction Rodeo Grounds. Sir, thank you so much Jerry, for, thank you. for, for yeah, allowing us to come out here. Yeah. I, uh, I know the whole council came out this morning. Uh, the whole council uh, uh, drove the tractors up. Uh, it wasn't the prettiest parade, but it was pretty neat. Well, and again, it wasn't a parade. We just needed to get tractors from there to here, yeah. and we were glad that the council and the mayor all got on and, and drove them well, over here well, for the event. an awful lot of and fun, so, and I hope we get to do it again. I, but, I hope uh, it becomes a, uh, a been, been a real event. pleasure for, for me yeah. uh, being able to, to, to work you with you in the past and, and uh, a lot of great things for our city. Okay. So, so thanks for everything you you've bet. done. I know we didn't get even remotely a chance to talk about everything that your club has done for Saguaro Ranch Park, but yeah. from the citizens, from myself, from our council, yeah. thank you so much for everything you've done. Maybe I could just, last thing is, I, I hope that the city re realizes what a partner the Tractor Club is with the city to make this all work. And that we never get out on the on the backside of a fee system or something like that, because again, the, the group, the guys, the, uh, the energy, the attention that they've brought to this place is really the other half of having the physical place. This really helps. I mean, and, and I think it's a good synergistic project. I love to see it going on a long time from now. Yeah. So, Jerry, thanks a bunch. Thank you so you much. Bet.